my titties would have been all over Instagram mm -hmm. because, honey, they didn't allow cameras inside the clubs at this time, yeah. which we were great. But honestly, it wasn't to protect us. It yeah, was to protect, protect the married them. men. Absolutely. This is the Cats and Pudding Podcast. A melting pot of pudding. And now, here's Jen. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Cats and Pudding. And I'm Jennifer Delandro, and today we have a great guest, uh, Chrissy Monroe. And she has a great story, and she has a wonderful foundation that we're going to be discussing. And I'm welcoming you today, Chrissy. I'm so excited to have you on my show. You are a very interesting woman, and I'd like to hear all about your foundation. And it's called Survive to Thrive, and this is, has to do with domestic violence. Correct. Correct. And thank you for having me. I appreciate the invite. Well, welcome. Can I ask you a quick question? Sure. Where did you get the name Cats and Pudding? That's what I asked my friend. So, I mean, basically just came out of a conversation. I said my life went from parties to events to traveling to now I sit home with my cats and eating pudding. That's it. That's, That's where my life has become. So it's like... Everybody, I love now, it. It's it's just everything. So the show is everything. We talk about everything from cats to pudding. I love it. So love it's it. Like Creative. A two, it's a two. It's a two. Um, a two definition meaning to it. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> I, I was like, this is different. I said cats and pudding. Did you hit the wrong spell check or something? Like that? So no, that's cool. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. Yes. You're so pretty. Oh, thank you. Really beautiful. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. You thank say you. that like you're surprised that well, somebody would say that. You're a beautiful honestly, woman. Thank you. I appreciate and it. So tall. Thank you. But you know, after I turn fifty, it's like I know it's hard. Like I'm on the wrong I side of fifty. I'm fifty one now. No, and I, it's, this, it's fifty. I'm, thank it's, you. I'm fifty three. I wake up in the morning. I'm like, who the hell beat me up when I'm in my sleep? Yeah. I feel like somebody kicked my ass when I was sleeping. I'm like, let's thank go you. get him because it, yeah. it's, and it's I'm rough. very confident, and I believe you, and yeah. I, I definitely know I'm beautiful a thousand percent. But I'm looking at Sometimes these twenty somethings, feel, and I'm like, God, like where did all the time? You know go? what? They don't have what we have. No, they don't have this. No, they don't have. They don't. And, the, no. They don't have it at all. No. It's so. like, uh, lights are on, nobody's home. Exactly. So, <laughs> and it's so much worse because when we were 20, it was a lot different. I think we were a lot oh, yeah. smarter and a lot. I think that the internet dumbed and, and the phones dumbed a lot of people down. It made them smarter in certain ways, but it dumbed so many people down. And it's crazy how the generations went from being so resourceful. Like, our generation was so resourceful. Generation. A thousand percent. Right? Oh, it yeah. went from we that. things and up. Was, yeah, yes. I'm like, I look at my kids. I'm like, Mom, can you drive? me here i'm like you're you're 20 why do i have to drive you there like yeah I, my mother would tell me to walk like every I, convenience every right, luxury everything, now right. everything is about instant gratification always which oh. also you know the 50 year olds back then when i was a teenager didn't look like 50 no now. they looked like they, they looked like they were 90 yes and i was true. like i thought 30 was old right. i dreaded turning 30 but now with fillers well Botox, people died in the 1900s they, when they were 50 25 was it was that was their midlife, midlife. crisis <laughs> I asked my grandmother one time, I'm like, I like, what happened when people got sick? She's like, they died, Jen. They went to the hospital and died. There the was no penicillin. There was yeah. no penicillin. There was nothing. And <laughs> leprosy. It, right. It was crazy. Like, can you imagine? Yeah, and these horrible. kids, their only thing they have to worry about is if they're gonna order Uber Eats or they're gonna go and you know, or they're gonna go to Chipotle. That, know, that's like such their a major, tough life. It's such I know. A, I, know. So I feel so sorry for them. I really We do. only had, I think, Domino's was like the big thing when they had delivery. Right. Remember that first time like, wow, we're calling Domino's. Right. Was like yeah, right. And we had and we didn't, we had no cell phones. We didn't have remote controls. Mm. I was my father's remote control. I used to change the station for him. Like yes. that was it. They don't the cords, phones the cordless cords phone. On it. Remember when Store sixty nine came oh out? Redial was like, hold on, I'm going to redial yes. you. Right. Like, or, or, or if you really, if you wanted to talk to somebody and they were on the phone, I used to do emergency breakthroughs. But I would it would we have a code to be like, oh, I think it's the wrong person, and they would know it was me on the phone. And they would yes. hang up so you wouldn't get charged for it. I know. <laughs> like you have a relationship, you have an emergency breakthrough from Stan. Meanwhile, I'm calling, but they would know because they would charge like five, like five or six dollars for each yes. emergency breakthrough. And like you were balling if your mom got you your own phone in your room with your own number. Like I have my own phone. Yes, like, yes, yes. <laughs> you were like, woo! I have my own phone now in your room. But kids are like, why? They want they want fifteen hundred dollar phones now. It's crazy. Oh yeah, it's crazy. So yes, so. Yes. Let's get back to your yes. to to. I don't, we can talk all day because yes. we can totally talk about. It. Yes. So let's talk about your your foundation. Okay. How how it started. What inspired you to you know to form it, and who is who are any key players, if any, involved? Okay. Well, most people know me from being on Love and Hip Hop New York season five, and that was like. One of the you were only on for one season? One season. Okay. Oh, my God. That's a whole nother <laughs> episode. I could have. Oh. How was that experience? It was wonderful. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was life-changing in a lot of great ways. There's some negatives, but more perks than 
non works right. And it was what I moved to New York for. I'm from Baltimore. Okay. I moved here 22 years ago with the goal of getting on TV, acting, modeling. I've been acting and modeling since I was 12. Mm -hmm. um, I did everything pretty much. I hit the ceiling in Baltimore with um, what there was to do. I was an extra on The Wire. I played a manicurist on ho Homicide with Richard Belzer. I did a, a two, two days of filming in D.C. for Michael Moore, who did Fahrenheit 911, mm -hmm. on a show he did called The Awful Truth. Like, I pretty much did everything, anything with John Waters. Like, I was always extras. I paid my dues. Right. And then I said, you know what? I need to be in New York. Like, right. there's so many opportunities. I'm only three hours away. I can always drive back if I ever want to go see my family, this and that. So I did. Packed up everything, moved here in the middle of winter, started my How whole life over. I was 27. So you left home, but you came here by yourself? Well, I had a, I owned a vintage clothing store called Funk okay. in the Trunk for three years. Oh, I love that. Yes, and I owned a house, a row home that I renovated while I was living in there. I bought my first property when I was 24. Um, what they call now flipping properties, right. but it was just natural to me because I've always hustled. Um, I was with someone for 10 years. He was from New York. He was Dominican. He was a drug dealer. Um, he got murdered when I was 27. He was 29. And I just didn't want to be there anymore. Did you have any children? No. Okay. I didn't want to be there anymore. Um, yeah. It was too many things that reminded me of him. I'm sorry. It was a lot. Um, they were all in my business, people knocking on my well, door. Well, it's probably a small... A lot of it's things. Small, it's a well, yeah, like community. The authorities, you know, they brought me in. A lot of things. I had nothing to do with it, obviously. Um, but I always came to New York with him on the weekends. Right. We went to Soul Kitchen. We went to Palladium. I was oh like, Oh, my wow. God. I, Palladium. Jesus. Like, that shows our age. Yeah. I'm like, the, the models. <laughs> Did you I'm go like, to Club USA? Yes. My Club time? USA, everything. I used to work in... Um, and uh, what should we call it? Limelight? It, no. Uh, I worked in the limelight. I also worked in, um, I can't even think of the name right now. I'll think of it as we're going. But it yes. was what, that was one of the last clubs I worked in when I, when me and my when my husband and I got engaged. He's like, the, the, land, the only club we were Dance working Dancetaria? No. no. <laughs> uh, I can't even think. Not Club USA. It's, it's just slipped my mind. But it was, um, it was, I don't, it was like, it was near the Copa Cabana. It was around the block from the Copa. I can't think of the, the name. The China of, Club? No, no. I did work in the China Club, too, on Mondays, yeah. too. So it was, anyway, like, it was amazing. Great. It was a whole other world outside of Baltimore where he was coming down there to make money, but then, you know, he would bring me up on the weekends, and he would spend it. We would be out with all these celebrities and models. I mean, I'm seeing Mickey Rourke. I'm seeing, like, all yeah. these major... Oh, Sound people. Factory, that's where yes, I Yes, Sound you. Factory. Oh, my God, it was killing me. <laughs> shopping down, you know, shopping down in Soho. Mm -hmm. Like, I wanted to be here. Yeah. Um, and when he passed away, I really was just, like... I got to go. You got to do something. I, I had change. everything. I had a store. I had a house that was paid for, paid off, everything. So um, what did you do with the business? You I sold it. it. I got rid you. of it. Yeah, I liquidated everything. I was going to put it all in storage here, but the rents in New York were no, crazy. So crazy. I just started everything over. I knew two people, which were his two cousins. I started dancing at Sue's Rendezvous as a stripper in Mount Vernon. I was killing it. When I tell you, Sue's Tuesday nights at Sue's, Funk Master Flex was DJ and DJ Clue. This is where I met a lot of the celebrities I knew in the industry. So I was kind of more infamous before I was so-called famous on Love & Hip Hop. Mm -hmm. I knew all the rappers. I lived this lifestyle. I was getting flowed out, flewed out, whatever they call on Instagram, before it was even such a thing. There was no social, social media. media Thank then. God. No. Oh, my God. If there was social media when I was young, I would have been dead. My titties would have been all over Instagram mm -hmm. because, honey, they didn't allow cameras inside the clubs at this time, yeah. which we were great. But honestly, it wasn't to protect us. It yeah, was to protect the married them. men. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, they didn't want to get their picture taken. Yep. They didn't want to protect their customers. So that's fine. But I made a lot of like, relationships I still have today with a lot of these Famous people, mm -hmm. actors, sports players, um, rappers and stuff. To me, they're just normal people. And they were actually coming in to see me, right. spending their money on me. me it's like, right. okay, <laughs> who's the bitch? <laughs> so, um, you are the bad bitch. Hello. So um, I was watching Love & Hip Hop when it first came out. And one of my very close friends is uh, with a A-list celebrity. And we were I was sitting in their house in Miami. And I was like, God, this is my real life. Like, this is my shit. I don't sing and I don't rap, but I need to be on that show. Like, I'm really that bitch. Like, this is my real, I'm the real loving it. So I was like, you got to know somebody that's on the show. She's like, well, I have a friend that may have a friend. And she did. Mm -hmm. So a week later, a couple days later, I'm in Mona's office and I'm, honey, I went to Mac and got my makeup done and my lashes. I put on my 20 inch ponytail. I put a diamond dog collar on my chihuahua and I walked in Mona's office like I owned it. I was like, yes, you need me. I'm that bitch. And say less and you got on the show got on the show um so yeah so i got on the show man it was, it was a good experience oh man it was a dream come true okay. and i know what i signed up for mm -hmm. but i was very strategical in the fact that 
I knew not to get wasted or, mm-hmm. you know, shit that they could ever use against yes, me. Because it's still right. a business. Of they course, want ratings. Yes. So I knew not to go in there making an and ass And they will myself. exploit you oh, and not, ca- not give a shit. It's a numbers game. Right. So I knew how to play it cool, but still give them what they needed. Right. And I was on, I think, 14 out of 16 episodes the first season. My my breakout season, I was in the show opening, which was rare for a newcomer. Um, because, you know, I knew what was going to be exciting for right. the audience to watch. That's what it all breaks down to. So it was successful, but honestly, I couldn't stand my ex to even go through another right. season. He made me feel physically sick when I saw his face. He made me sick right. to my stomach. And you can't, you can't fake that and you can't deal with somebody. If you're, he was you're, a fucking nightmare. Like, right. you know. And you didn't even want him any more involved in your life no matter what. Exactly. And I never really put it out there. Well, that's, that's, that's what, what, very behind noble the scenes because, because a lot of kids. people would, would, would stay and, do, and put themselves in the situation to be on TV and to be mm-hmm. famous. I mean, that's a very noble thing to do because a lot of people wouldn't do that. They no, would, exactly. So they would run I do, the I do at, admire you for that. Thank I, you. I have to give you Th- I have to give you thumbs up for that. Thank Very you. Good. And I loved it. And I, yeah, I would have loved to have done a second season, but not with him. Right. And you know, you need well, that you storyline. Gonna, you weren't gonna do. You know, and I can't fake it with no, somebody else and all that shit. Like, I couldn't do it either. I wouldn't be able to. No. I would have been like, you know what? It's this is not for me. Exactly. I can't do it. So I knew, you know, I had to really run with that one season mm-hmm. and make it, you know, make it pop. Um, anybody that's been on reality TV, you got to yep. milk it you gotta, if you're right. smart. I was just talking about that with my with my last guest. I'm saying that, you know, it, if you're going to do it, you, it, it, it's, it, it's not going to be a career reality TV. No. You wanna, it's a stepping stone for something else or something or help expand your business or whatever you're going to do or, or expand maybe your, maybe getting into production or getting into acting. Exactly. Or, and even acting, it's hard because a lot of, a lot of, a lot they, of people, they, they don't, they with stay away from They're people also in always Chrissy from Love and Hip Hop, yeah. no matter right. what. They pigeonhole you into, yes. into, into that, into of that course. whole thing. A thousand percent. So, so um, you know, I was doing my appearances, bookings, things like that. It was great. I was still eating off of that. So I met a younger guy at a charity event that I was mm-hmm. hosting. And we hit it off very fast. And, uh, you know, he ended up moving in with me like a month later. He got paroled to my house. He just came home from jail <laughs> on a gun charge. <laughs> you know, typical. I've dated many guys, you know, mm-hmm. I, I, that was used to that. I grew up on that whole life, you mm-hmm. know. Um, that was oh you only had a gun charge you yeah. sold drugs no big deal okay I was just saying it's funny I I I knew on t- uh, on, on my hands I could say ten people that I knew where there was in prison or you know dire- I know directly people that were in yeah prison. my father did six deal. years for armed robbery yeah. before I was born my you husband know. went to jail for ten years yeah you know, it's like you know that's a normal it's thing normal yeah. exactly so I didn't care so I let him get paroled to my house because I mean we were. <laughs> Fucking every day, two, three times. He was a hot, younger guy, tall, body. Was he excited about that, or did he think he was in jail with you? No, he 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 just he couldn't wait to move away. Like, yeah, so you know, um, he was from Coney Island, Brooklyn, mm-hmm. which I had never been there, and um, I went with him for the first mm-hmm. time later on. But you know, I I know he was from you know a lot of things, but I didn't know he was a woman beater, which is what he turned out to be. So that's how. The, how much younger was he? probably like 15 years younger than me but he was mm. when i tell you we went everywhere we went women were on him he was exceptionally fine like model fine like hot hot like tall he worked out every day he did the pull-ups from jail you know all that yeah. shit you know so i mean we couldn't go anywhere women were on, like he and he knew he looked good right um but it became very abusive pretty quickly as soon as he got in the door and he knew he was locked in right, with me, locked in with you it so got was it hard be, to get was it hard to get him out oh my god it was i was a trying to move it was oh a fucking god. holy nightmare this lasted about 10 months but he wow. almost yeah he almost beat me to death um in a nutshell um in every every facet of abuse emotional physical verbal i would rather he get me for diamond than, jewelry than go through emotional abuse I yes. think that's worse because i, I still have that You're still holding on healing to that and the healing from what happened. oh yeah um it's terrible i'm still traumatized to even date mm-hmm. but in a nutshell um he almost beat me to death i had oh photos God. i had medical with records. his hands or was he using a with his fist and his Jesus his foot with fucking oh steel toe timberlands on my living room floor kicking oh me in my God. face i had bruises on the back and of my did hands you, how did it stop like how what did did you were able to get away from him did somebody heal okay was going so on? no um twice the neighbors called the cops because I never believed in calling the no, police. I was brought up, you don't call yeah, the police. Don't call the cops. <laughs> you, yep. you just don't. You don't call and the it cops. was just, I never called the police. Yeah. But the neighbors did because one well, time God. it was warm and they could hear me screaming for my life out of the fucking window. Mm-hmm. And he, but he ran out because he knew. Like, he Isn't knew. that a double-edged sword? The, in, 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 
background. You know, we have similar backgrounds. It's, it's you know, you don't call the cops, but exactly, you know, it's like, what do you do in this situation? Exactly. And basically, I was like, you know, you got to go. He's like, well, and you- they can't even help you anyway. No, he wanted he he didn't have anywhere to go. He was staying at his cousin's house in the projects before he moved in with me. Um, she didn't want him to come back. He had nowhere to go. He didn't have any family. So he's like, bitch, you wanted me to fucking move in. I'm not leaving. I have nowhere to go. And it doesn't work like that with parole. I got to put in an application and get approved by my PO. So I had this motherfucker stuck in my house, sleeping on my couch and fucking me up, stealing from me. I had to go get a safe deposit box to put all my valuables in. It was a fucking nightmare. nightmare. I literally started packing up my own house that I love that I've been in for now 20 some years, like since I moved to New York. Um, you live in to Manhattan? go look. No, I live in Westchester. Oh, oh, West, oh, um, Westchester, I'm sorry. To go look, and oh my God, those apartments were so trash and so expensive. And it was a fucking, on top of That's all the stress, I'm beaten up, beaten oh down. God. Like, I'd had lucky black he didn't eyes. Kill you. I'm lucky. He dislocated my left jaw. Um, I'm so sorry that happened to gave you. Gave me permanent hearing damage in my left ear. Oh he broke my, my front God. tooth. I got veneers now. And nothing Cracked happened. Cracked my to rib. Him. I'll tell you in a second. All this shit, and I have it documented. I've posted the photos, and I have. Doctor's reports from when I went to the hospital. And, of course, I well, lied and said I got in a bar fight. Didn't know. Well, you lied. Yeah, because, you know, I, you're scared. He always told me, if you ever call the police or call my PO, I'll fucking kill you or I'll give you a buck 50, which means cutting your face. And I believed him. This yeah. guy's a fucking well, loser. Well, I would believe him, too. With he the has way nothing to lose. To, he's got nothing to lose, exactly. I was the biggest come up of his life, but he didn't even realize it at the time. Like, he was so jealous of me. He told me he hates females. Um, and, you know, he can get whatever he wants from women. I think he was definitely on the down low gay. Yeah. Because he, you know, and like even even one of his uh, his friends said, jail is his home. Sounds like Ted Bundy, actually. Yeah, like, jail is his home. Women and wants to, and mean, when he's out is his vacation because he lives in, he's, that's all he's ever accomplished is really he jail was time. Never, he was never, ever, ever, ever like uh, convicted for any, for, no. for any kind of assault charges Nobody's for ever pressed charges. And did anybody ever come to you afterwards when they found out what happened? Because so, I'm, I would think that he's done it in the past. It's yes. not just you. So, this is what happened. So he went out and did a robbery. I'm so sorry, buddy. No, it's okay. It's okay. I know. This, no, it's okay. It's, this was seven seven years ago. So this was at the height of my fame, too. This piece of shit's telling me when I'm on the red carpet, you look like shit. You look old. Nobody's even looking at you. I mean, because he would go with me to events. He would drive me and right. stuff. And it was helpful to have someone with me to right. carry my stuff. Anybody, like, <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah, like, being true. at these things. Yes. Like, people don't know. You go to these these bookings and stuff. You're by mm-hmm. yourself. It's hard to get somebody to go with right. you. You know what I'm saying? It you is. need help to take pictures. Somebody's got to hold your coat. You know, stuff like yes. that. So, um, okay. What happened was I used to pray to God. I said, God, please let him get hit by a fucking bus. <laughs> Let something happen to him. Just get him out of my life. I've always believed in God since I've been little. I went to Catholic school. I said, God, please. Like, I know. And God will provide. This was Satan in my house. Yep. So he went out around Christmas time and committed a robbery. He went and tried to rob some guy for weed in Queens. And he went in there, tried to run out, I think, with like a pound of weed from the guy's house. But he didn't know there was three other guys in the basement. This is the story I was told. They came up and they they fucking beat him with bricks. Good. He, he had deserved it. staples in his head Good in three places. They had to cut Good. his clothes off. So he went to jail for the crime. So now I'm like, oh, my God. Now he's Thank gone. He's, he's out. He's Thank gone. God. I felt so relieved. Thank you, God. I packed his shit up in the big, black, hefty bags. And I called his cousin. I dropped that shit off. I hope you saged your whole house Everything after that, please. Because I got that's bad. Everything. Calm usual. Good. Changed the locks. And I'm telling you, I said, God, thank you. I cried. Like, it was like a dark fucking cloud. cloud. I started unpacking my stuff and hanging my pictures back on the wall. I got my home back. Like, you so felt then, like the weight of the world was off your yes. shoulders. So then I said, you know what? This motherfucker's going to be in jail for a while. Let me press charges. Because... If I don't press charges, like, I feel like I'm not standing up for myself. Right. Like, let me try to get some kind of justice. You know what I'm saying? For everything he did to me. Because I've always been a fighter. How dare he come into my life and fucking disrespect me and, and try to destroy me after everything I've been through. Him. No, fuck it. Fuck that. I really didn't do shit for him. He had a job. Um, but he was still no, a thieving but, bastard. But, but, you, but yeah, but he was you, living in my house. You were living in your house. He was. You were in a relationship but, yeah, with him. You driving my your, car. You, yeah. Telling people I'm a broke you bitch, but you're living soul. in my broke house. You were, you were in a relationship with him. Yeah. You were in love with him. So yes. it was like you did give him, you gave him a, rela- a nice exactly. relationship. To be so, around me. Right. And to he be around He was around him. celebrities, his favorite rappers. He got to take pictures with all kind of shit. So shit he would have never been exposed to in life if he didn't meet me. But I didn't care about that. Um, so he just I, wanted him to treat you right. That's exactly. All. He never would. So um, I went and pressed charges finally. 
And let me tell you something. <laughs> After the hell I went through, walking into that precinct with a bunch of older dudes in Yonkers saying, well, you know, they didn't want to do the paperwork. You should have came sooner. Well, why didn't you come sooner? I didn't know this is something called victim blaming. Well, I didn't know, you know, I was supposed to come at us right away. When I, Most people never go. Right. 95% of the cases time. never get reported out of fear yep. because it's not even when um, you're with the person. It's after the victim leaves that they come back and kill or, or right. hurt you worse and, and take the children's lives. Because I told yep. you, bitch, you ever fucking leave, I'll kill you. And if I ever see you with somebody, I want my kids right. around anybody. I'm that's when most murders too. happen. Yeah. Um, so most women don't even get a chance to go and report it. So I'm taking a step and being brave to go report this motherfucker finally. And they're telling me I should have came sooner. So... I get a victim's advocate from family court. They told me I need to get an order of protection. So I which went down nothing. there. They which is nothing. Which is nothing. Piece of paper. It. Yeah, it's nothing. And they granted it to me right away. Um, they gave me a five-year order of protection immediately. Then um, they only charged him. I went to the district attorney. She didn't want to help me. It was a woman in Yonkers for the domestic violence unit. She didn't want to help. She said I should have came sooner. More victim blaming. I had to get my personal attorney friend, who was a business attorney, Claudia, to go with me to kind of put the heat on him and say, listen, we're going to go public. She's on TV. We didn't even want to have to pull that car. Why should I have to? Right. This is a crime that was committed against me, a violent fucking crime. How much longer after did, did, did you go to the police after? Like, um, did, did, it was did, about a month, maybe a month. So it wasn't that long. No. It wasn't like it was a year later. Yeah, they just don't want to do the paperwork. No. So we finally put the pressure on him. They finally charged him while he's in jail, and they gave him three... Three lousy fucking months, and they ran it concurrent with the time he's in there for the robbery charge, which means he didn't do one day for well, what extra. he fucking did he to me. He didn't do anything because it was concurrent sentence. I was so disappointed and so sick because I'm filing paperwork. I'm going to this courthouse. I'm sitting here waiting for my turn. This is time consuming. But one thing you have it on record that he, he did, was yes. violent, so if he does it again, God forbid. But I mean, add it to the five pages of, of fucking of other felonies that he, that he has, right? Yeah. So the lady called me. She's like, well, we sentenced him today because they do it over the phone. I, so I don't got to see him. I did. Oh, my God. I was dreading having to face him. I, that was fearful. I didn't want to ever see this motherfucker again. So they called me and they're like, you know, um, we gave him three months. Like they really did something. This bitch calls me from the district attorney's office and is like, oh, you know, and he got a domestic violence. I said, three months. Are you fucking well, kidding they, me? Well, they don't care in the city. They let everybody out now. Yeah, they don't care. They, exactly. go, they go in and out. So She's it doesn't like, matter. Well, at least we charged him. I hung up on her. Yeah. I said, you know what? This is so wrong. They go in and out. What about, I'm on TV. I'm famous right now. What about these women and men? Because anybody can happen to. Who have no platform. Who have no voice. Who nobody listens to. I had to fight to e even get heard by the system and they still let me down. What about all these other people that are dying, that are going through it right now, that are suffering like I was? I need to speak up because if I don't, who's going to, right? I had a platform from TV. I got a couple hundred thousand followers. I'm using that. Fuck the selling the tea and all this bullshit. Right. I'm going to so use this use to do some something good. good. Yes. So now what? So now when you start, so this happened, you, you had the, he was charged. Now, did he try to come after you when he came out or no? He was, no, no, because I already had the, the order in place. Protection. Okay. Thank God he's never bothered me. Did he ever try to contact you? No, but I've gotten the, the fake page threats, bitch. Right. He's coming after you and all that shit. Okay, whatever. Be stupid and do it, because I'm not the weak bitch that you beat down anymore. Like, come, come. Like, come. You know what I'm, I'm going to, yeah. So, so no, but he, go from what I understand, he already moved in with another girl in Brooklyn. Broke okay, her so, nose. He, so he had, so he had, a, he already had another oh, yeah. follow up. He, he broke her nose plan. in front of her eight year old daughter, robbed wow. her, same MO. So, several of these women, once I went public, started the page, started the foundation, survived to Thrive Global. Um, I started posting my photos and telling people what happened to me. So, other people started coming forward, so other you, victims. So, uh, from him. From him. Wow. How many His victims? exes, it was so many. Jesus so many. Christ. And how old was he? Like, in his 30s. I was 40. Oh, I was like 45. He was like 33, something. I don't know. He's like 15 years old. In his 30s. But he has a long history of beating women. And, and these women never I mean, one woman said he him. permanently, no. One woman said he permanently scarred her. He assaulted her handicapped father in Florida. I mean, he's just a fucking... He's a, an evil human being. Beyond. This is a person like, you know, I don't wish death on people. Like, this is a person well, that yeah. deserves. He, no, death is not even good for him. He should be living tortured. and tortured suffer. to death. Exactly. So he needs to suffer. That's how I feel, too. He needs to suffer. So um, so many people reached out. And he's going to suffer. Exactly. He's, you know, 
the, it, God's a merciful God, and calm is a bitch. A thousand so, percent. You know, he's so my, my thing was, you know, I went public with this. People know who I am. He was obviously, you know, telling them he used to date me. That was like a status symbol for his bum ass to tell them, you know, he was with me to, you know, get these girls to feel kind of competitive. Like, right. wow. Oh, now it's so I, uh, sick. It's triangulation. It's narcissistic abuse. They that's do a it. sociopath. Yes. They, they triangulate yeah. mm -hmm. and make one jealous and try to play. So, you know, these women will read it out to me, reach out to me and stuff like that. And I'm like, listen, hon, I'm going to keep this short. But, you know, I didn't have a warning. This guy just came home. Nobody knew who he was. I didn't know he was a fucking woman beater. I said, but I don't know what you thought that you saw my photos. You saw my story that anything was going to be different, different with, you. with you. And it wasn't I wasn't victim blaming them. But it's been five or well, six for, more. For somebody to even say, like, what, do I deserved him to do this? To, no. me, to even look at to even look at those pictures and not be appalled by him even no matter what you did, you didn't would deserve Nobody. To, deserves to get like doesn't matter. But if I seen another woman say you posted pictures and then I go date the guy, like what the fuck like, like you know what's what I'm wrong saying? with you? Yeah, exactly. Some women, so some women are very desperate. And I and I told him listen, listen, I can't tell you what to do, but and I people hope you get, get away charmed safely. by people. He's he's a charmer. Yeah, he was I'm good sure. looking, and, and the sex looking. is great. He knows how to use that. Sociopaths, that, yeah, narcissists. You know, exactly. Textbook. Yes. So you know, so, they're very they're very charming. Exactly. Ted Bundy was the same way. They all yeah. exact sick. So, um, I'm going on my eighth year with Survive to Thrive Global, which is a 501c3 nonprofit. Um, it's been a massive success. And, you know, I didn't really know what I was doing. I just knew I had the desire in my heart to help other people not to go through what I went through. And if I could save one life or prevent it happening from somebody, that's even, it's better than, and, you know, I was so embarrassed and ashamed to come out because I thought I was going to get blacklisted in the industry. People would look at me as drama when I come on set. Oh, I don't want to work with her. What if that guy comes after her? You know, you think the worst right, of the worst because you're worst. in that mindset. Right. It was, the, it was the opposite. Mm -hmm. I was going to these industry functions and I was having high level executives pull me to the side and say, thank you for what you're doing. It happened to me. I never wanted to talk about it, but thank you. So I'm like, wow, like this is the opposite of what right, I thought. What thought was going to happen? That kept me even going more because I really. Wasn't that so, why weren't you felt so good oh that you God. actually. That, that you was better out. than being on any show. Wow. Like, cause you're really making an impact. You're really saving lives. And I've had people from Australia contact me, London. I was on a podcast in London this summer. Mm -hmm. That was major for me because when I started this, I said, survive to thrive mm -hmm. global, because this is a global pandemic. People are dying all over the world as we speak every single day. And it, and when we were locked down, there was a, the domestic oh. violence went through the roof. You're stuck, was, you're with, stuck your with that. Yep, I used to pray it. every night for people that were stuck, and I used to think, what if this motherfucker was still in my house? Like I used to have those nightmares like that. He was oh my in my god. house. Imagine. Oh my god, Jesus. I'd probably be dead. Yeah. He was so enraged all the time. You wouldn't have to do anything. I got punched in the face for changing the radio station and blood squirting everywhere all over the car. Like, did you, you have hit, to do? Did anything. you hit him back? Oh yeah, I fought back, but. I couldn't beat no, this guy. He's six foot three, no, works no, out every day. No. I'm no match for a no. fucking man. Uh, no. I shouldn't I mean, have to fight him. No, man. of course you shouldn't have to. Yeah, so um, yeah, so it's been a great success. Um, and it's gonna continue to grow. I mean That's amazing. Yeah, the the page is at so Survivor what do you, So what is so what do you do with the foundation? So how so how does it work? Okay, so I'm not a counselor, I'm not a licensed counselor. A lot of people come to me for counseling. I'm not trying to be liable. I'm not trying to get sued. Um, you know, that's some people's field of study. They mm -hmm. become, you know, uh, advocates. You know, I do advocate, but I'm not a social worker. I'm not, you know, I'm not full time with that. Just because it happened to me. Yes, it's right. unfortunate, but that's still not my dream to own a shelter. Right. I don't want to be in a shelter all day. Like, yes, it happened. Just like if you have cancer and you cure it, it doesn't mean you want to be at the cancer foundation right. every single day. And that's my choice to, to help people in my own right. kind of way. So my main objective is to educate and empower. So do you have other women who like maybe write blogs on the page and like do, no, to talk about I, it's their been stories? It's so hard to have good help. Yes, I do share my platform and I do t offer my space for everyone to, to come tell their story. and share in three paragraphs or less, mm -hmm. but they have to know once it's out, it's out. It's out there. Because it's not just about me. My platform is, is for everyone to share because you never know who's watching that can relate with certain someone else's story, mm -hmm. not yours. It's not about me. It's about the cause, period. And it's about prevention. If I can get out more and get to the younger generation to teach them, right, teach them. even the young men, right. how to treat a lady. Because sometimes they've they never don't. had that excuse, they uh, experience. They've never had an example. There's a lot of, there's a lot of fatherless men in yes. this world. 
They don't know. And they have they don't know. They just don't know. And a lot of these young ladies, they never seen their mother get treated right. So they accept a lot of Right. This. So they think that that's okay because they saw that their mothers are in bad relationships or not in any relationships. They don't mm -hmm. know how a good relationship looks. Yes. They, they don't understand and that. I grew up in dysfunction. Yeah. My, I grew up in a very violent household that was mm -hmm. domestic violence. So I, I just thought it was kind of normal. Right. Like this is how my parents were. Well, it's not normal. It's not normal. But now I had to do therapy and, and learn now to break that cycle and, and break that, that generational curse, so to speak. And now I'm sharing my knowledge and my information with other people who have gone through it, who are going through it and who are getting out in hopes to inspire them that listen survive i'm a survivor mm -hmm. i'm not just a survivor getting by i'm a thriver Driver. my life is 10 times better because this motherfucker tried to take everything he tried to take everything from you and you rose and above i it. fought and i took up for myself and i even wanted to work on myself even more to to try to work and you and look where you are patterns. now that's right and look where you are now hello right look you're amazing now what's the how, where we, how can we find the foundation um it's at survive to thrive global um on instagram on facebook it's at sttg on twitter okay. I, i'm revamping my website right now so that's down okay but it's survive to thrive global .org. Okay. um it might be up we'll, t but, we'll tag it when we yes. put the, but at the survive podcast to thrive out, so global we'll on instagram is the main we get up to two million in engagement every month um which means Two million eyes are on domestic oh, violence. That's that means amazing. its impact is great. It's, it's something it's, that simple. And don't you feel good that this I love is it. helping? Oh, this man, is helping I'm other you. people, I'm men and women. This is my legacy. I don't have children. This is what I want to be known for when I leave this beautiful earth, leave behind for others to continue to do what I'm doing, to carry on this mission. Because this is going to go, as long as people are born, people can say we're going to end domestic violence. Uh, no, you're not. As long as people are born, it's going to yeah, happen. It's been happening for thousands and yes. th since since man has walked the earth. But we can try to prevent, prevent it. it. We Absolutely. can try to educate people where it doesn't, you know, to get out before it gets before, to be the physical. And, and, and see the signs and see, you know, and help the, those people get help before they do. To bring know. awareness. Right. And that's the key is prevention. Because... What could, these laws are so antiquated from the 1950s when it was a domestic matter between husband and wife. These things need to be brought up to speed, up to the modern 2024. Like, we need to make some big changes. And they may not happen in my lifetime, but I know I can try to be as a part of the process as much as possible and get out here and be a big voice worldwide for the people that don't have a voice. So... Well, yeah. I, they're lucky to have you as an advocate, Thank and that's you. amazing. Thank and you. I also understand that you have you're into food too. So I yes. wanted to talk of like yes. two, two minutes about that. So that's your other passion, right? I so. love food. I lost some weight, but <laughs> I wasn't always this. I love food too. Yes, it, it's it's a blessing and a curse. I love food. It's my vice. But yes, I'm a top uh, top local guide on Google Maps. I'm in the top one percent for New York City for my food reviews. So if you see me walk in your restaurant, you better be on your A oh. game. I also have a food page called Chrissy's Food Fantasy, which and is where you can hobby. find that. It's on Instagram at Chrissy's Food Fantasy. Okay. My main Instagram is at Chrissy. And you, 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 you put the restaurants there that you that you've yes. went and that you recommend. And, okay, good. Yeah, and I'm yeah I'm there eating. I'm gonna see if there's restaurants I like on your list. Yeah, I'm gonna and check I, it out. I show if it's good or bad because I'll <laughs> sell you if, if it's trash too. Don't waste your money. Don't come here. Well, that's what you, you know, you want, you want an honest opinion. You that's know? right. People work hard for their money. It's like, true. There's nothing worse than going to a restaurant and spending a hundred dollars and it sucked. And it's like, oh my God, you feel sick. Like, you know, no, the service true. was horrible. So yeah. Um, cause I don't tell them who I am when I come in. I'm right. just going to get the real experience. Right. You want the real experience and you want to, you want to see what, how, what, what it's all about. And listen, there are, there, 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 and if you're, if you're reviewing a place, it's not like it's hurting them in, in a way where it's like they're going on Yelp because people do go on Yelp and they'll, they'll, they'll bash someplace for the stupidest thing, you know, and just because they're just they're having a bad day, they'll do it. I mean, people get slaughtered, but some people do deserve it. You know, yeah, no, and I'm not even that person. I, yeah. It takes a lot for me to leave a negative yeah. review. You got to be a real nasty bitch. Yeah, that's the what waitress, I say. Or the food's got to be cold and burnt. Or I just don't, my thing is I don't leave reviews. I just don't go back that you lose yeah. my business. Exactly. And, Unless they really did something wrong, like mm -hmm. like I've left one review for the, my a neighborhood pizzeria. It was so funny, and I and I I'm friends with the owner of my whole life, and his the guy behind the counter just pissed me off. He thought that me and my husband like cut the line. I'm like, why don't we cut the line and cut two old ladies? They're like, yo, you cut the line. I said, no. I said, you're 30 years old working behind and slinging pizza. You're just a miserable fucking guy. You want right? to shut up? So I left this nasty <laughs> review. This guy slinging pizza and he's just nasty because he's hot and he's sweaty. And 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 I said we spent. I said we spent tens of thousands of dollars. I'm like, imagine I said tens of you're thousands. You're regular of there. Pizza. 
Yeah. And they're like, it was so funny, but no, they knew it funny. was me, but I took it down, but I was just so mad. Yeah. Because it was like, what are you insulting me? Disrespectful like, to bye. a customer. Like, come on. A regular. A regular. You're a regular. A regular. <laughs> My whole family, everybody I know comes here and eats that. But yeah. that's the only time I ever left a really nasty room. But I took it down. Yeah. But that's good. That's that's a, that's a you know, that's I like that you review it and you're honest with your reviews. So that's good. Yeah. I'm going to check it out. And they're good than bad. 90% good, 10% bad. And you go all over the place? You go Miami, just... Miami, to- anywhere I go. Anywhere I go. Love I it. did one in London, and, you know, oh, it's true. The food in London is not <laughs> it's great. It's not like here. The KFC no. over there was amazing. I don't eat KFC here, but over there, it's like gourmet. It's- <laughs> oh, man. It was the best thing you ever had, like... <laughs> yes, yes. So. so you get a good review for the KFC in yes, London. In That's London. amazing. I'm yes. going to have to check that out the next time I go to London. Yes. So, Chrissy, thank you so much for being on my show. Thank I had a great me. time, and I'd love to have you back again and see and see how your foundation is and the progression of it. And your ash and your food. Are you going to have a food channel, you think, soon? I want to start a food review, more of a show, and okay. even maybe incorporate some dates in there. Mm. Maybe the date was good, but the food was trash, or the food was good and the date it was, was trash. trash. Oh, I love that. <laughs> That's great. I love Maybe that. Maybe they That's both good were good. Movie. Who knows? <laughs> so, yeah. Why not? I'd love to hear all about it. So, I'd love to have you back yes. in a few months if you'd come back. Of and course. I, think I had a I great time you. with you. You're fabulous. You're yes. fabulous, too. Beautiful, fabulous, and fun. Very interesting story. Thank, thank you, you so much for coming today. So, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. And we'll see you soon. And don't forget to find me on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple. Please watch the whole video, not my shorts. Watch it all. Have a great day. Yes, that was great.